Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. It's Jason Calacanis. This is a breaking news update from the launch ticker at launch.co. We're testing a, a new concept, which is we talk about a news story that's breaking. And of course, the big news today uh, is that the NSA is collecting phone records of all Verizon customers. That broke last night on The Guardian. And today we have a second story that's breaking around um, the NSA uh, and a secret program called PRISM tapping and having access to the service of Apple and other people. Kieran, why don't you just tell us what the update says on the launch ticker? Okay, so the Verizon story, we'll start with that. Uh, the uh, Foreign, service, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court had granted an order to the FBI on April 25th. That's what The Guardian got a copy of. They're collecting the phone numbers of parties on either end of a call, location data, call duration, unique IDs, timestamps, not the content of the calls. They're permitted to do this until July 19th. It was a three-month order. This includes calls to the U.S. and other countries, and Verizon is not allowed to disclose the existence of the FBI's request or the court order. A White House spokesperson said laws governing such orders are something that have been in place for a number of years, and it's vital for protecting national security. So this is not the first time this has happened. About seven years ago, there were reports of the NSA secretly collecting call records uh, with data from AT&T, Verizon, Bell South, also to detect terrorist activity. So I guess, is terrorism a reasonable justification for this type of surveillance? And that's a question that's, of course, uh, reasonable to ask with this uh, allegations of the PRISM program as well, which is... So that's part two. That's part two. And that just broke today in the Washington Post. That's correct. So the Washington Post... And these stories, just so we're clear, are unrelated. They just happen to happen in the same 12-hour period. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I wonder if the Washington Post, when it started in, you know, doing its own reporting based on the Guardian story, came across some sources who... Then or they were the working on the story at Washington Post. The story came out from the Guardian, and they right. thought, this would be a... Gr we have to speed up the release of this. Let's stop working on it. Let's get it out. Right. So let's just start with the Verizon one first before we go into the second right. one. Um, to be clear, this is the transactional information. This is data right. around the phone call. It's not the contents of your call. So exactly. if you were having a phone call about something, talking about something of a private nature, the government didn't have the phone call. They had the transaction, which is who made the call, right. how long it occurred, and who exactly. picked up on the other side, I guess. Right. And then the idea is that they don't need a warrant to do that because it's not – it's transactional data, like you said. Right. right. It's not the actual content of the call. Which is troubling in a way because data now, everything's transactional, right? Sure. So if you know every phone call I've made, you can put a pretty good composite together. And from my understanding also, the, the other thing that falls into this is where your cell phone is located. Mm -hmm. So criminals are routinely being caught because they have the location of their cell phone without a warrant. The government can get that too, or cops can get that too, I think, without a warrant. Um, yeah, the 2005 court ruling cell site location data is also considered transactional data. Which is fascinating. I don't know exactly how I feel about this. And the question, I guess, for me is, are we going to catch terrorists with this or not? And I, I think if it's lone wolf, dopey terrorists, like the, you know, the Boston guys are obviously dopes, right. like the, you know, and, you know, it's terrible they killed three people, but obviously these are incompetent terrorists if they only could kill, th if two people who are terrorists can only kill three people, and uh, you know the Aurora shooting person and the Sandy Hook shooting pe person can kill dozens. Um, this would catch people like that, right? This could help in aiding those folks. It could. But That's if you're a sophisticated Al Qaeda person, you're not using a Verizon. You're using a burner phone, a phone you can throw away, and you're probably using some level of encryption, or you're using data and doing an encrypted call over a Tor network. You know, which in the end, maybe the NSA is, if they're able to tap Verizon, why wouldn't they be able to do the Tor network as well? Well, the, and there's, there's, that's something that's very interesting. A retired NSA analyst and whistleblower said, I figured it would probably be about 2015 before the NSA had, quote, the computer capacity to collect all digital communications word for word, but I think I'm wrong. I think they have it right now. Well, see, then the there's, key part of that sentence is word for word. Right, word for word. So I wonder if they're allowed to transcribe what's being done inside those calls. Like, so whenever you see information like this come out, what we know is probably half the story. Right. So the other half, I mean, with this much big data, they could figure out movement of people. They know where you are. I mean, basically what this means is the government knows where every citizen is at every moment in time. Because you can match it with other uh, data that are publicly available. Well, and you know so. that because you know the cell tower I'm on mm -hmm. – and you know my Twitter, and you know my Facebook, and you know my Skype, and you know my, my driver's license, my social security number. Yeah, everything is just, they've got <laughs> you basically locked. And so 
I guess the question here is, do 300 million people losing their privacy, is that worth the trade-off for catching, that I guess, the, the question. if the lone wolves could be caught? Because I don't, my, my, my theory is, if you're a serious terrorist, you're one step ahead of all of this doing encrypted communication, I would think. I would think that they're sophisticated enough to do that, if they're sophisticated enough to do the bomb levels that they did at the London bombings or what they did on 9-11 even. Like this is, these are sophisticated yeah. acts, I think, yeah. or more, more sophisticated acts, I would say. So now let's go to the, so this is a, and this is only a 90 day thing. So I guess well, the question is why been, now, or has this been renewed every year? It's been renewed and we don't know, know certain how. politicians have come out. Diane Feinstein, who's the chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, a Democratic senator from California, she noted that the Verizon court order has been in place for seven years. Um, there have been, you know, It's in place for seven years. Right, so this is just like, it's like a rubber stamp thing. They just renew this every, and wow. members of Congress have been briefed. It's not like it was a, it was secret to them. And certain members of Congress have dropped hints before about and Verizon security can't and say intelligence. No. That's what, I mean, they're not allowed to talk about it. They're not allowed to talk about it, but they can't say no. So you couldn't launch a service, like a phone service that guaranteed we're going to not give over away transactional data. And there's no reason to think that Verizon's the only company that's involved here, right? I mean, of course not. It's going to be AT&T. It's going to be T-Mobile. Everyone's going to be. Yeah. I mean, I heard a long time ago from somebody in the industry that after 9-11, like this is like two or three years after it, you know, Homeland Security, whatever, had just basically gone to the AT&T hub and just literally tapped all the fiber cables and like they were just tracking every single piece of data. It does seem like it would be highly effective though to catch uh, potential lone wolves because all these lone wolves are active on message boards. And you got to think the message boards for Al-Qaeda and for these radical clerics are either being run by or, or, you know, they're, they're using server software that the NSA and FBI and CIA have you know, hooks into. Sure, sure. I mean, the other other part of this is that this is all because of the Patriot Act, right? It's the business records provision. That's mm. what I read. Um, and even that said, Representative Jim Sensenbrenner of Wisconsin, he said he was troubled by the revelations, thinks this is un-American and, and so forth. So you could argue that even... So you even, have Republicans and Democrats both saying this is getting a little ridiculous. Well, there's, there's, and certainly the Electronic Frontier Foundation is looking into whether government is violating the Constitution or existing statutes. And, yeah. you know, there's, this is not going to go away fast. It's probably going to be a much bigger deal in the political world than it why, is in the tech world. I guess the other question I have is why did this get leaked now to The Guardian? Somebody leaked this. Right. And whoever leaked it is going to be joining Bradley Manning when they catch them uh, in you know, a, a serious, you know, because they, they tapped the, this this comes on the heels of the AP, ha, the Associated Press having 20 people tapped, which <laughs> now the Obama administration says, I'm sorry, the Justice Department says they tapped those 20 people not to tap the journalists, but to catch the people calling the journalists from the Justice Department or from right, the to Pentagon find the or to find the leaks. So that's kind of a lame thing too. It feels like the police state under Obama is more severe than under Bush. Well, and people maybe just didn't realize that a lot of the things that happened under Bush just kept going. Nobody stopped them. Yeah, I think he was supposed <laughs> to unwind some of this was the, I guess, the thinking, but he's kind of a hawk, Obama, right? And I guess he well, probably- Well, you know those drones. Let's go, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think they just show a folder to these guys and just say like, look, look, there's three missing nuclear bombs and you could be the president who has a nuclear bomb go off and, you know- port of Long Long Beach or Long Island. Do you want to be that president or do you want to do everything you can to avoid that? Because yeah, with conservative estimates, we can think a million people are going to be dead when that bomb hits lower Manhattan. And, well, not only that, and that's larger, you know, theory kind of thing, but that anybody who has power is reluctant to give it up. So once you've empowered somebody to do something, they will they will fight to keep that power. And that makes this administration no different than any, any other political, yeah, you know, entity in the world. You have that power to do this. Why not keep it? The cost of maintaining the power is um, much less than the cost of having a major terrorist act during your tenure. You can always hide behind. We're doing this for, you know, safety of the people. Yeah. It's interesting. I think we're reaching some sort of, it feels like we're reaching a tipping point where people actually care about this. So let's go segue quickly into the Washington Post story. Right. So they have obtained what they say are slides about the PRISM data collection program. And so this is actually from the National Security Agency touting its effectiveness, and it shows the logos of the companies involved. And those logos are Facebook, I just want Yahoo. to say, first of all, because I have it up on the screen here for those who are looking at the YouTube video or um, the stream or whatever, 
Whoever, this is definitely an authentic slide by the government, just by the <laughs> so layout and design ugly. of it, because this is literally some person in Washington hitting the right mouse, the right arrow, right mouse key, and downloading the the images and not even cleaning them up. And I do love the fact that they're like staggered at the top there, like they just drag them around, and then like, what's the story? This is PowerPoint, obviously, it's not Keynote, but look at this, like they drew the arrow, and like the arrow's layered on top of one box, and then it's on top of the other, it's very weird. Right, well, and it, it does show, you know, top secret, whatever, you know, in that little red box at the bottom, on the right. Oh, it does? Where does yeah, it on the oh, yeah, it is top secret, okay, good. <laughs> so now this was leaked by somebody, keep going. Right. So since this came out just this afternoon, the Washington Post broke the story. All the companies that have been, you know, implicated have come out and denied it. That includes Microsoft, Yahoo, Google, YouTube, Apple. They all say, you know, we don't like Facebook said we do not provide any government organization with direct access to Facebook servers. When Facebook is asked for data or information about specific individuals, we carefully scrutinize any such request for compliance with all applicable laws and provide information only to the extent required by law. So they're all kind of covering their their asses. Wait, wait, here. but okay, we we have to get into what they're saying there. So Facebook is saying that we only do this when we're given a court order, only to the extent required by law. Okay, so they're doing it. Because this would be required by law. And so then they're admitting that they're doing it. Right. And that's well, not a denial. Well, Google says Google does not have a back door for the government to access private user data. Okay. Because in this, they said they had access to servers, right? right. Was that the quote? The some, There was some sort of quote about, like, they have direct access. And now here yeah. it says, this slide is, this is another, I mean, I just, one thing I'm happy about is the fact that the government is not wasting our money on doing like high-end slide presentations or obviously <laughs> this is done by somebody who has absolutely no talent because look at the yellow That's on the green thing. and what is that weird arrow they can't even do the arrow proportionally I haven't even figured out how to hit the shift key to keep it proportional or whatever that key you hit when you drag this up and look, so microsoft costs- was the first to fold in 2007 and install this yep. yahoo 2008 then google in 2009 facebook pal talk also in 2009 youtube for some reason I, what's on youtube i mean uh, Skype, AOL, which is kind of weird. Why? Why do they care about AOL? There's nobody there, you know, using that for communications anymore. And then Apple, it says, was added in October 2012. But there was just an alert that from Apple. Do you have that? Now the the Wall Street Journal. I just saw on my phone right. issued an alert. Yeah. That emphatically deny that it is handling over handing over user information. We have never heard of PRISM. We do not provide any government agency with direct access to our servers, and any government agency requesting customer data must get a court order. Hmm. So now they're saying, see, this is when you can tell when companies are lying or not, right? Like, so we have to parse the language again. So we only do it when there's a court order. Well, mm-hmm. there could be a court order for all this stuff. Right. They've never heard of PRISM, but maybe they've heard of the privacy research and, you know, maybe they've never heard the acronym, but they actually know what the acronym, what does the acronym stand for? Is it? Yeah. Well, it's, it's a reference to the, the Washington well, Post says it's that it, the program is called PRISM after the PRISM is used to split light, which is used to carry information on fiber optic cables. All right, fine. So they're ta- so that's, I mean, I believe it's called PRISM because again, only a government dork could come up with that. And I think it was previously, this was called... Um, I think previously the the nickname of this was like Leprechaun or something stupid like that, like Clover or something. Um, so again, this is transactional information, they think? Well, it says, what if you look at the slide, it says, what will you receive in collection? It varies by provider. In general, email, chat, Whoa. video or voice, videos, photos, store data, voice over IP, file transfers, video conferencing, notifications of target activity, logins, etc., Online social networking details and special requests. Now, it doesn't hmm. say what that means. So email, as in the, we don't know if that's the body of the email or the transactional. Now, what's interesting about this is this stuff is supposed to be collected for international. So you have to have a preponderance of like 51% chance that they're outside the country. So it's like a sort of, there's some benchmark of like, this is actually for trying to find terrorists outside of the United States, is my understanding. Um but this is also troubling, and essentially, I guess the public now has to decide, do we want to make a big stink about this with our government and have a couple more terrorist attacks, potentially, or not? Um, like, does my, do my, video, my videos and my email, do I really care if my email is being read or being collected? I mean, it's kind of creepy that they're keeping all this stuff, and if a system can be abused it will be and so because all this data is being collected you can be sure there are guys 
just like at Facebook, there was a guy who was creeping on women in the system and like looking up their private information and reading like. That, actually, there was a rumor that Zuckerberg himself was doing this, that he had a super password where he could read other people's right. messages. And that was a longtime rumor in Silicon Valley that he was reading messages between girls and this and that, girls he's dating or whatever. And who knows if that's true. That's just rumors. But there was actually a guy at Google and I believe at Facebook. There were two different separate instances where they were creeping on women trying to get dates or spying on them because they had super access. Well, and you even had people in the State Department who were looking at the applications for passports from famous people, right? Right, and they think they, they did that for taxes as well. Like, they were looking at the tax reports of people. <laughs> it like, happens. Yeah, and There's then they... bad actors. Yeah, and so it's very hard to know how to feel about this, um, but it is getting... It is an interest... There's something going on right now that we have the AP news story breaking... You have um, the IRS admitting they, you know, did all this kind of bad right. stuff with the uh, Tea Party. Then you have um, Verizon and The Guardian picking that up, and then The Washington Post picking up this NSA. It's link. a bad day to be in Washington. It's a bad month for Obama, for sure. Okay. And it makes it seem like he's really creepy and, like, or, you know, or... Um, this is all stuff that's been going on, right? Like this yeah, NSA just... prism thing is obviously going documented to 2007. The Verizon thing is a seven-year thing. So maybe the Republicans or Obama's folks are leaking all this stuff so that on top of the IRS and AP and also a Fox journalist was being tapped as well. So you have those three like unlucky strikes by Obama. Um the IRS thing was obviously not under his control, but probably somebody right below him knew they were doing that. So he probably didn't know. I talked to somebody in the government who is like a very senior person recently. And the person said, you know, when these things happen, usually POTUS doesn't know. But if you go two levels down, somebody sure, knows. Sure. And so they just don't tell him. They keep stuff from POTUS, right? So POTUS has, no, I'm just using a president <laughs> of the United States, FLOTUS, POTUS. I mean, I, mean, I don't know. I saw Shervin using the word POTUS constantly. So I was like, if I'm going to be. If I'm going to seem halfway intelligent or cool, I'm going to have to just refer to him as POTUS. Um, so anyway, the president d didn't know about the IRS stuff. I'm pretty sure about that. But then he probably he had to know about these other two things. The IRS these are security. And these are security issues. And these too. things he definitely. Knows. And the other interesting thing is they said one out of seven reports in the PDB, the Presidential Daily Briefing. You know the thing that Bush didn't read when it said Obama, uh, Osama, determined to attack in the U.S. in August, and then we got our asses kicked in September. That thing, the PD, Presidential Daily Briefing, which is all of like 10 pages or something, I think. Obama obviously reads it, I'm sure. One, and, and I'm sure every president will since, you know, you don't want to get caught, you know, missing a slight little thing like, you know, Osama bin Laden is going to attack the U.S. with planes. One out of seven national security reports comes from PRISM data now. So this is obviously, I mean, you think about that. All the CIA agents out there, all the operatives we have, all the military, this is already 15% of our, you know, get. It's gonna, that's going to keep going up. So in a way, it feels like we're doing a pretty good job. And it only costs $20 million. That's a, how, <laughs> how did the government do anything for $20 million? That's the, that's, I, I think that's I'm kind of, me away. <laughs> I might be in favor of this now. $20 million a year. It feels like we're getting a pretty good deal. And I'm wondering, there's a pretty good joke. Uh, somebody asked when they thought the um, NSA would open up the API or the, the, <laughs> the fire hose of Verizon data. data. <laughs> the fire hose is now being tapped. All right, well, listen, this has been a very interesting update. Um, we're trying this out for the uh, launch ticker. So this video will be on the launch ticker shortly after we uh, discuss it. We don't, obviously, none of us know what's going on here, but we're going to continue following this on the launch ticker, launch.co. Um, and if you are one of the 5,000 plus people who subscribe on email, become one of the $1,500 a month in reoccurring revenue uh, that we have through uh, voluntary subscriptions. So if we just give five bucks a month, and you can do that, launch.co slash um, support, maybe? What is it? Launch.co slash, I think it may be donate. I'll go to the menu bar here. Let's see. Donate. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, if you go to launch.co slash support. Launch.co slash support and give you a reoccurring donation. Yeah, you can put that up on my screen. And this is really good because it helps us pay for the uh, ticker researchers and all that kind of stuff. Special thanks to our friends at MailChimp uh, for not tapping all of our emails and, and being good citizens. But no, seriously, uh, MailChimp, thank you. Um, we use it for the launch mailing list and for the ticker and for Jason Nation and everything. I've been using this product for five years. And you can manage up to 2,000 subscribers and send 12,000 emails per month for free. 
consistently releasing new awesome features like their mobile-friendly email templates. And with version 8, you have multi-user access. So that means you can give the NSA, the FBI, and the CIA <laughs> different levels of access based on what they need in terms of you know, their ability to pick up chicks on your mailing list. Seriously. Hey, and you know what? MailChimp was not in this list. MailChimp absolutely will. I think there's actually a couple of MailChimp developers. And uh, I think the, the sysadmin over at MailChimp is qu- currently in Guantanamo for not giving up your email. So I just want to thank. <laughs> if somebody can get a message. If you can tap like a message for me thanking the MailChimp sysadmin at Guantanamo. I think you do those in EEEs. <laughs> Thank you for calling. <laughs> uh, so and there's no contract. Free plan is always free. Uh, we'll see you next time on the... And thank you, Kieran, for that great news report. We'll see you next time on the launch ticker. Beautiful. <laughs>